Hey, it's Ken, and welcome to the self-hosting walkthrough for Xerox. Let's jump right in. So we're going to be starting with our server. We're going to need a virtual machine, so I'll use Linode to create that, and I'll also use the Linode firewall and domain uh, record. So let's do that first. Just a quick overview of what we're going to do later. We're going to need an OpenZD network. You can bring your own, or you can follow my lead and run the OpenZD Quick Start to get one up and running on the same computer, on the same server. We're, then we're going to finish up the Xerox bootstrapping and install Nginx all on the same server. And I'm going to use a very lightweight $5 a month Debian 11 virtual machine here. So that has a gig of RAM, one CPU that's shared with other tenants, and 25 gigs of storage. That'll be plenty for this exercise. So this will be my Xerox server. And we'll just generate a random password here. Put that on my clipboard. And I'll also save it in my notes just in case I need it. All right. We're going to use the SSH key that I've already loaded up in Linode. Oh, don't need to add one. We'll just use that one. Okay, great. Now the Linode is spinning up, so I'll go ahead and put the IP on in my notes in case I need that. And we can go now to our firewall and DNS. Trucking right along on the server setup. So for our firewall, I only plan on having inbound rules and not restricting outbound in this case. So let's go ahead and add an inbound rule for SSH. We know we're going to need that. All right, so we've got our firewall created, and we'll come back to add more rules to that. Let's go ahead and check on DNS. Forgot to hit save, I think. There we go. Thanks, Linode. You saved me from myself. All right, so I've already created the zone here and delegated from bingnet.cloud. So you'll need to do that wherever you have your domain name registered. I've created Xerox here in Linode and delegated these name servers. So um, we're going to need to create a wildcard record for our Linode IP. So that'll be an A record. The host name will be star as an asterisk, and it's going to resolve all subdomains of xerox.bignet.cloud to this IP. So that should be live in a few minutes. And that's really the only initial setup that we need to do here. So let's go ahead and make sure we can log into our Linode, maybe install a few prerequisites as we start the OpenZD quick start. So those were the brief notes, but as you can see, this is linking to the ZD Quick Start. So I'll go ahead and pop that open. Now, this is just saying, make sure you save the password. So we'll be sure to grab that on our clipboard and put it in our notes when we get to that point. So let's do the first section now. This links to the OpenZD Quick Start named host OpenZD Anywhere, which is what we want because it incorporates a global DNS. And we want to make a, a functional Xerox instance that'll work across multiple devices, multiple networks. So we're going to need a public IP uh, that like we like the Linode IP that I just put into DNS. Alrighty. So this is suggesting some additional firewall rules, 84401 and 2. Let's go ahead and add the OpenZD stuff into our firewall. This is already saved. Go back into our cloud firewall and add another inbound rule. This time we're going to need to make it a custom stuff. We're good. All right. So progressing to the next step in our host OpenZD Anywhere quick start. Now that we've got our firewall set up, let's get logged into the Linode. So I'll put the IP address on my clipboard 
me paste that up here. And I won't be able to run screen yet because I haven't actually installed it. But it looks like we're in. So in the quick start here, I see that we're going to need a couple of programs installed. So I'll go ahead and install JQ and curl. And while I'm at it, I'll install Vim and screen. Just in case I do get disconnected, I'll be able to reattach to a screen. Hardly happens anymore though. Old habits, I guess. Alrighty, that's done. So now we are logged in and we can start running the express install setup steps. So this explains that the express install is going to create all the network, all the files that it needs for your ZD network right there inside of your home directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and compose a, an environment file that I can use. So this is gonna to need to be an external domain name. We've already got a wildcard DNS record set up pointing at this host. So I'll just add uh, the word VD onto the beginning and that'll match the wildcard record. Then I'll copy the rest of this setup for express install into my environment file. There's the three ports that we already made firewall exceptions for. And it looks like the rest of this just tells the quick start script to use that external domain name and DNS uh, well, IP address rather. So now I've got those environment variables set up in my current shell, and I can go ahead and run the express install one liner here. All right, I'll just let that hum. There's the password we need to save. So I'll put that on my clipboard and type yes. All right, good stuff. Looks like the quick start express install script has finished running. So let's uh, keep moving here. We need to create our systemd service units. So I'll just paste and run these prompts right here. That output looks good. And we didn't start the router controller with the functions, so we don't need to stop them. That's a good call out right there. So this would be the next step is to enable those services. I'll just run it like it's written there. Looks good. And now we can check on the status of those two services that we just enabled, the router and the controller. And they look happy. So we'll go ahead and make sure ZD's on our path with this. And we'll need to run that if we log out and log back in in order to have access to the quick start functions for the shell. Now I should be able to say ZD login and I have a ZD command. ZD's installed and I can run it anytime I need to. Looking good. All right, that finishes up the quick start for ZD. And if we go back to our self-hosted guide for Xerox, then the next step is to get Xerox installed. So I'll go over here to the download page for releases, get the Linux for my CPU architecture. All right, Xerox looks happy. So we should be able to now run it, make sure we've got a good install. All right, that looks good. All right, Xerox is installed. Let's go to the next step in our self-hosting guide. Configure the controller. So we want to create a configuration file on our server. I'm going to make a directory for my Xerox stuff. I've still got the binary in this directory that I just downloaded to install. So let's go into that directory. We don't have anything there yet. So let's make ourselves a configuration file. And I'll just go ahead and paste this example. Enable paste mode, get that in there. 
And now we can fill in some more uh, information here. So we're going to need another random string to use as our admin secret for Xerox. So I'll paste that in there. Alrighty, so we've got our admin secret saved there and our uh, controller listener port is configured 18080. We're going to create a database file of this type in the current directory. So this looks fine too. We can contact our Z controller on port 8441 which was in the uh, in the ZD quick start that we did port 8441 is the edge controller uh, API port right there and this is not going to be a, a random secret that we generate now this is going to be the same one that we saved the ZD admin password right here. So I'll put that on my clipboard and copy it into our Xerox controller config. That looks good. So I'll save that file and we can continue. Alrighty. That was our install page. And so we've done the controller configuration and this explains what the different properties mean from there. So let's go ahead and set up this environment variable. So that's just to configure the Xerox endpoint here so that it uses this uh, environment variable to contact the Xerox controller instead of the normal uh, public hosted service, Xerox IO, Xerox.io is the, uh, the public address. So we want to use our own Xerox, not the public Xerox. Although ours is public, it's just for our use. Okay, so now let's bootstrap OpenZD using Xerox. We're going to run the ZD admin bootstrap command with our configuration file. So if everything's configured correctly, then this should work. I think I'm, oh no, I did get it typed in there correctly. I hit tab and enter at the same time and it just happened to work out. So that's great. Now, if we list things, let's get back logged back into ZD. And now if we uh, list some identities, we can see there's a there's one that's been created for Xerox, uh, but from now on we'll just use the Xerox CLI uh, since it's managing Z for us. So I'll scroll past that since it seemed to succeed just fine, but we do need to notice that Xerox is telling us to run Xerox admin create front end. So I need to scroll up in my history and find the ZDID of the front end that I need to create. I think it's going to be this value right here that I just exposed with the ZDCLI. Well, let's scroll up and find that. There it is, Xerox admin create front end, and that is the same uh, ZDID. So I'll copy this and we'll use that to compose our front end template. Get a little bit of space going there. That's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Let's make this nice and big. Okay, so this will be token dot Xerox dot Unet dot cloud. That's our namespace for this instance. So Xerox controller will create front end URLs like this. All right. I must have skipped a step. It says the controller is not available. And of course I didn't run the controller, so I must have forgotten to run the controller. Ah, I see. So I ran it prematurely. We're gonna need to do this first. Just Z rock controller and then our configuration file like this. And I'll go ahead and 
send this to the background and we'll just make sure that's happy. All right, we're listening on the expected port. That's good. This was the command that failed. Ah, right. So yeah, I just ran it prematurely once again. I, I need to have this admin token defined. So I'll go ahead and define that in my environment. Let's do uh, an assignment of this environment variable. And we'll go ahead and get that value on our clipboard. That would be the Xerox admin token right there. So I'll paste that and I'll export that so that Xerox will be able to use it. And now I will finally run the front end command. Successful, great. So um, now I should be able to see the front ends. There we go. All right. So now that we've created our front end, we need to configure that. So I'm going to put this example configuration file on my clipboard, create another file, and we'll just let this be the same namespace that we used for the template. All right, now let's start the front end. So we will say Xerox access public. Make sure that that's happy. Loaded identity and listening on 8080. Great. Actually, I'm root, so I don't need to say sudo. So we can see it listening on those two ports. And we can see ZD listening on these ports. And we didn't expose this router port because we only have one router and that's the port that other routers would use to talk to each other. But we would need to make another exception for that one if we wanted a mesh of routers, um, which you probably do if you're going to grow the network, but it works with just one. All right, now we're going to uh, pause right here in the Xerox self-hosting guide because uh, before I start onboarding myself as a user, I'm going to skip over here to the Nginx guide and set up server TLS to front Xerox. So let's uh, choose an address. I'll use the same for the controller and we'll let all the other uh, domain names go to the front end. Cool. Um, we're going to need to install CertBot and get a uh, certificate issued. So I will go ahead and do that. All right, we've got CertBot installed. And now we're going to run it in order to start the certificate request process. We're just going to say CertBot Cert Only Manual. Let's supply an uh, email address and agree to the terms and be willing to share my email address with EFF. Now, the domain name that we're going to request for our certificate will be a wildcard bot namespace. So that matches our DNS. Now I need to go and create a record here named Acme Challenge. Also I'll go back to my Linode domain and I'll create a record of type text. 
just the first part, adding on to the suffix that's already implied by the zone, and the verbatim value there, beginning with capital M, ending with lower O. I'm, I'm going to set a short TTL, just in case I have to do this more than once so that the wrong answer doesn't get cached too long. All right, that's been created now. So I'm going to go and verify that this record is uh, has been created before I tell CertBot to proceed. Not seeing it yet. You can also check with the Linode server just to make sure it looks correct. So it hasn't propagated yet. We'll just give that some time. Oh, there it is. Okay, I think we're good. So I'm going to press enter to continue. Hopefully we get a certificate. We're either going to get a certificate or an error. Oh, there we go. Good. Certificate saved on the virtual machine file system. There's our cert and our key that was generated by CertBot. So that's good. We're ready to go to the next step. So we've done our Xerox bootstrap and now we're doing our Nginx setup. We've got our certificate. Now let's write our Nginx configuration file. We are going to need to install Nginx. That didn't take too long. Now that we have Nginx, we can write our configuration file. Enable paste. All right, let's start at the top. We are going to replace occurrence of the, this value. And that should match our Oops, I just made a mistake. There we go. And that should make our file path correct too for the private key and the certificate. All right, and we're going to talk to the controller on this port. And we're going to talk to the front end on the same port. If the SNI does not match API, it'll match the wildcard. And so those requests will go to the front end on 8080. And we will preserve the host header from the viewer. We'll write that into a separate log file. And we are done with our Nginx config. So we'll just scroll this down. Let's go ahead and uh, restart Nginx. I'll also check the status of the service to make sure it came back. Looking good. So we see we have a listener on 80 and 443. All right, now let's check our firewall and make sure that we're listening for 443. So this was our DNS. Let's go back to the firewall and add an inbound rule for HTTPS. This will be Xerox. And we don't care where it's coming from. This is global. Accept and save. Now we need to update the Xerox front end. Actually, I think that the front end is good because we didn't follow that step in the Xerox self-hosted guide. Uh, we did not configure it as 8080, but we can check by running the list command again. Yeah, we can see that the implied port 443 for HTTPS is in effect for our front end. So we are good there. Otherwise, we need to update it with the correct port for HTTPS. That looks good. So now we can go back to where we paused the self-hosting guide and invite ourselves. So let's run our invite command. Now, I never set up a, an SMTP server, so I will need to check the log in order to get that registration token. There it is. And now that Nginx is up and running, we can actually go ahead and try to bring it up in the browser. That'll be api.xerox.bingnet.cloud. There's our front end UI. Well, I mean our controller UI. And if we're following along with the guide, we see that we need to specifically address this endpoint, the slash register slash a registration token endpoint. So there's our token. We just need to add register onto the end. 
press enter. So it, it recognizes us as Kentest and asks us to create a password. So I'll go ahead and generate yet another random password and I'll put that in our notes. Kentest password. I'll paste that in here. Welcome to Xerox. So it says we can proceed to the web portal to log in. Open that over here. Same password. That looks good. All right, not much going on yet. Um, as far as the registration, it's telling us that the next step is to enable the shell. So I'll go ahead and copy that and run it on my virtual machine. Xerox enable uh, environment was successfully enabled. So I'll close this tab and we'll go on to the next step. All right, we enabled our shell. So I think that we are done and now we can go back to the, uh, now we can use our own instance of Xerox just like we would as a normal user. So uh, we've already done some of this stuff, got it installed. If we want to configure our Xerox on another computer, I'll use this window down here, which is my laptop. Just make that a little bigger. So in the back on the virtual machine, the server, we can see that we have an enabled environment now. And I'm just gonna reuse that same environment enablement token for another computer here so that we can have multiple environments set up. Looks like I got logged out. There we go. All right, we've got one in enabled environment, root at localhost that represents the server up in the top here. And we're gonna go ahead and add another one using the same token. on my laptop. So now I'll be able to share things back and forth between the two. And I'll go ahead and um, create a share on one just to make sure that I'm able to pass some traffic and we'll call it done. And that means that you can follow along with the other use case videos and do all the same things that you can do with Xerox.io using your own instance. So I've got this file on my laptop that I want to copy to uh, my server or to a friend's computer. So hypothetically, they could sign up for your Xerox instance and then they could enable their environment and they would be able to then access any files that you choose to share with them. So I showed you the, the enable command that I ran on the server, and I'm gonna to need to configure my laptop to use my Xerox instance before I can do any share stuff. So I'll say Xerox version, make sure I've got it installed. I'll say Xerox config. So this was the next step in the getting started guide for users. Since we already finished the self-hosting, we're just configuring a device to use our self-hosted instance. So we need to say set API endpoint, and then we can run our enable command. Well, I did forget that I already have Xerox enabled for another Xerox, so I'll go ahead and do disable before I say enable. So now we have a Xerox enabled, uh, Xerox environment enabled for our my laptop. So if, in order for people to share, they need to be on the same Xerox instance, and that's where we are right now. So we can go ahead and start creating shares between these two devices. So I'm going to share the current directory as a private share using the web backend, which means that Xerox on my laptop here 
is going to run a little web server hosting the files in the current directory. So we see temp zrock has been created and it's connected to our to my laptop named kpop4. So I'm going to run the prescribed access command on the server there. And that gives me a local web server on the server that I can use to access those files. So we can see that there's one file there and the, the request registered on the on the laptop. So let's run that same that command right there to download the Kentest file from the remote. And so we can see we got the expected contents. So traffic is flowing, workloads are working, and you've got your own self-hosted Xerox. That's pretty exciting. I'm really happy with this. It looks like it took about 30 minutes um, of work. And now that I've been through it, I think I could do it quite a bit faster, especially if I already had a server set up and didn't have to wait on DNS. All right, well, good luck with it. And uh, pop into the forum if you have any questions.